I'm John Mitchell, Mayor of New Bedford, and this is City Jobs. During an impending snowstorm in the city of New Bedford, crews at the Department of Public Infrastructure and the Department of Public Facilities, as well as other city departments, coordinate efforts to ensure public safety. So we're here with uh, the Commissioner of the Department of Public Facilities, Ken Blanchard, and we're gonna talk about snow today and snow removal. We as a city and um, of DPF and DPI together uh, do a great job removing the snow, and, uh, and I thought I would take this occasion um, to uh, to have you walk through uh, how you go about planning snow removal. So you hear about a storm, and it's a say it's a significant amount of snow. What uh, what takes place? When do you start planning, and what what do the plans look like? Well, if if we use this weekend storm for instance, um, we started hearing about it uh, obviously on uh, Monday and Tuesday. Um, so all of our all of our managers, all of our different department managers, started you know watching the forecast. Uh, we keep an eye on the computer. We have uh, several computer sites um, that give us uh, you know updated forecasts periodically. We like everybody else. We watch the the TV you know and, and yeah. different channels and try and get a consensus um, of what we think is going to happen. And and based on the amount of snow that we think we're going to get, we'll start to implement plans for uh, for that. How deep does the snow have to be in order for the plows to go out? We try to keep the plows a couple of inches off the ground um, because there are a lot of structures, manhole covers, uh, water, water uh, gate boxes, things like that. So we try to keep the plows a couple of inches off the ground. They, they run, some of them are on wheels, some of them are on skids, like it's a little foot thing. Um, what we'll do first is, is we combat the, the storm with salt. Um, if it's gonna be a big storm, we'll put sanders out um, we try to we try to uh, time it so that we have sanders out about an hour or so before the storm, putting salt down. That uh, it helps to prevent the uh, snow and ice from bonding to the road. And it makes it easier to plow later. Um, so um, ab about an hour or so before we'll, we'll start that. Once the snow gets to a, a two inch um, mark, then we'll call in the rest of the the troops and we'll put out the plows. Well, prior to the storm, we take out all our equipment. We go through everything: the headlights, the hydraulics, the brake tires. Make sure our tires are up. Make sure the sander operations are uh, are running properly. They're all calibrated. We can tell you exactly how much salt we put out, you know, per mileage. And once we get the truck physically ready to go on the road, we'll take them out and mount them up to the snow plows. So as soon as the first snow flake starts to fall, they're out there sanding immediately. There's no time wasted getting the trucks ready to go on the road. So as you can see, the salt shed, it's three quarters of the way full. I anticipate that I will be reordering on Monday morning a complete full shed which will be about maybe close to a thousand tons. We use straight salt on our roadways. It helps with the wastewater collection system and stormwater collection system, that it helps just wash away. If we would use straight sand all the time, what happens is over time, you'll get a buildup in the pipes and we end up with flooded streets. So that's why we've gone to a straight salt solution. It also helps really activate on the roadway to get rid of the snow as it packs up. We also have a mixed sand, uh, mixed sand and salt solution. As you can see, we try to mix it three to one, three to pot salt to one pot sand. And what we do with this is, this is used on the residential sand ballast that are out on every street corner, as you can see. And we also use this on roadways once it gets below 18 degrees. Eight, 16 to 18 degrees, salt will not work anymore. So this is what we have to go into. On the next pile over is just complete straight sand that we use. Straight sand is used around the Sassaquin pond area so we don't contaminate the ponding with the, the water runoff that comes through. So as you can see, we get a mixture of everything to combat any type of storm that we get. 
as I explained to the mayor that so far this winter with the little storms we've had, we have used up 2,100 tons of rock salt already. The equipment is the big thing. No failures with the equipment because as I stated before, once we lose a couple of pieces down, we start losing track. We try to split crews up and it's no good having one truck in one area, or one truck in another area to cover. It's too much for the vehicles to, you know, to compete with. What could go wrong? Anything from a flat tire to a broken hydraulic hose uh, to a transmission line letting go, which would kill the truck right there on the road. And these mechanics that we have will go out in the snow and lay on their backs to repair the vehicle to get it back up and running. I mean, all the plow controls are right here at my right fingertips. Shift all, all automatic trucks, which makes a big help on a guy who it's less fatigue on their left leg shifting all the time. Uh, and as you can see out the windshield, this is without the plow on it. Can you imagine going down a tight side street with this truck and trying to get through some parked cars with it? So it, it, it really depends on a pair of, an extra pair of eyes to really help you go by. Well, we have our communications, so we're in contact with the city. Yard. Also, the police department monitors our band. So if we have any emergencies or we find anything like a motor vehicle accident, car stuck or whatever, we're able to communicate and get the right person over there. 50 to the, 50 to the city yard, radio check. So this is the hydraulic system that connects to the front of the truck. This works, these pistons inside here that which articulates the plow and also makes it work up and down. What they're doing now is getting the framework all ready to accept the plow. What I'm doing now is just moving up the locking mechanism, makes everything work free. Again, we didn't do any plowing at all last year. So this is been two years since we mounted this all up. It's a trick to get them in. See, walks right in there after. They call them uh, quick, quick disconnect fittings. Well, we're gonna fire up the truck and we're gonna make sure everything works hydraulically on this. All operational. And then, how long do you, do you plow for? I mean, just um, just a simple question. What uh, when do you start plowing? The, the main objective is to make sure that every street is open for emergency vehicles. Um, we'll plow until we have several supervisors out there uh, checking the different routes to make sure that every street is at least passable. Um, so, so we'll plow until we're satisfied that, that emergency vehicles can easily pass up and down every street. Yeah. The Department of Public Facilities plows half the city. The, the part of the city south of Route 195 and the Department of Public Infrastructure plows uh, the northern half above uh, 195, right? Now, uh, when, you, when, you guys are, uh, when you guys are out there, Within your area, you've got people who are assigned smaller units, smaller areas. Can you tell us how that works? Sure. Um, what we do is, is there are a number of, of routes. We have, a, we have a snow manual, and inside the snow manual is a map um, of the city, and it's sectioned off. Um, there are 18 routes in the southern half um, of 195, and then the, uh, there are 18 routes in the northern half. Uh, 195, as you said, is the boundary, and, and um, the southern portion of 195 is broken up into smaller grids, and we assign um, three trucks, at least three trucks, to every grid, um, and those guys are responsible to plow that. They're, they're routes, called routes, yeah. so those guys are responsible to plow those routes. Uh, public infrastructure does the same thing on the northern side of 195. So when we see plows uh, out on the road sometimes, uh, a lot of times on main roads and they're not plowing, sometimes people get frustrated, but a lot of times it's, um, it, those trucks are on their way to their assigned spots, right? And it, 
Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, each truck, I mean, once they leave the yard, they'll, they'll go to a different route. The reason, depending on where they are, sometimes they'll put the plows down, sometimes they won't. But if they don't know the route, if they don't normally plow that route, they don't know the nuances, you know, the hydrant side versus, uh, you know, the, the, the restrictions um, for no parking by signs and all that. So rather than make a mess of it, they kind of, you know, you tend to leave that to the guy who knows those routes. Yeah. And we try to keep the same person in the same route year after year after year. And if we have to integrate new employees, we usually do it um, in a route that already has two other people that are familiar with the route yeah. so they get to know it. Yeah. And they have to, as they go back and forth, uh, eventually they run out of gas, so they've got to go back to the garage uh, and, and gas up and then come back, right? So they, they, there's a lot of running in between. There is the, yeah, and then, it, you know, if a truck, uh, a lot of times what'll happen is the, the windshields freeze up a lot so that the windshield wipers sometimes will get stuck or the windshield wipers will break. So they're on the way back. They have to come back to the garage to make repairs, you know, sometimes minor, sometimes major repairs. So there's a lot of traveling back and forth. So tell us uh, what the most challenging part of plowing is. Well, uh, the most challenging part is, is the, the narrow city streets with double-sided parking. Um, because a lot of the bigger trucks, you know, the, the bigger trucks are such an important part of the scheme, especially when the snow gets above six inches. The smaller trucks have a hard time pushing it when it's a heavy, wet snow. So the bigger trucks are a very important part of the scheme. And a lot of times, if, if, if they're going down a street, um, South 2nd Street, for instance, is, you know, double-sided parking in some areas, they just can't get through there. So that, that causes the whole line of plows to stop. And then, you know, a lot of times they get to a point where they can't back up. So that means that those three guys are, are dead until we have, they're dead in the water, dead in the snow, until we get, until we get those cars moved. Yeah. Here, Mayor John Mitchell gets a chance to talk to a plow driver, Helder Baptiste, who is also a mason for the city of New Bedford. So uh, when you're out, when you're out, you usually have a zone, right? You have a, a, yes, an I area do. that you're responsible for, right? So I, which which area are you usually responsible for? I'm, I am between Kempton, Kempton Street, Linden, Purchase, and County. Okay. And I got all those little uh, me and another tr uh, this truck and the smaller truck. Yeah. So you just go back and forth. Back and forth, yeah. And uh, when you I do that for forty hours straight, you got to gas up in between. But yeah, fuel up. Uh, sometimes things do break down. Uh, you gotta come back and grease the wheels on the plows, uh, and then you go back. And when, like I says, you gotta keep going in the same area yeah. until the snow is actually stopped. When your yeah. area is passable, uh, all, all, no, I mean pretty much clean. Yeah. Then you gotta help out the other trucks that either broke down, that they need a hand, and th that's how we, you know, keep going. That's how we do it. Yeah. But it's, it's unless anybody wants to sit on the seat and show me if they could. Anybody know has any ideas? They could do it better. Yeah, I'm willing to listen. Including all, those, mean, people, including all those people who are swearing at you, right? Yeah, yeah. All, all, all the violent people, yeah, the ones that think they, uh, the ones you know, doing the a bad job. And, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. What size truck is this? This is only a six-wheeler. This is not a, uh, it's not a ten-wheeler. It's, it's below a ten-wheeler. So you're able to get down certain streets depending how people park, too. Yeah. They ride on the corner, I'll never make the corner because this is a ten-foot plow. So, so it's ten. That, that plow is ten feet long. Yes. So when we impose a parking ban, uh, what does that enable you to do? Well, it enables us to go down every uh, every road, push the snow right to the curb. Most of the time, I will go down a road pushing the snow, and I will get stuck behind the car that's parked that I won't be able to get through. So what I'll do is I'll end up leaving a pile of snow on the road, backing up, and then. The tow trucks will have a hard time getting in there now because the pile is just building up. Small trucks won't be able to push it, so that puts everybody behind. Tell everybody why we have a parking ban. Well, the, the parking ban, the parking ban, what it is as inconvenient as it is to, to residents, is really it, it's a it's designed to allow us to do a better job plowing snow faster so to, to get people back on the road. So the parking ban is, it, it, you know, if, if you're going down the street and you've got a, you know, you've got a, 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 a huge dump truck with a, with a nine foot plow on it, you know, and you can't get through the, the street, I mean, 
you know, the parking ban has to, it's probably the most important piece to, to helping us to get this done in a, in a timely manner and get people back on the road again. So if people didn't comply with the parking ban, you'd have a tough time getting the, the big plows down the street and even the smaller plows down the street. Even the smaller plows. And what that does is, you know, the guys, they try to, they try to open up, um, you know, as far, as close to the curb as possible. So we, we call it curb to curb. But, you know, if there's cars on both sides, now you've got to be careful you're going close to the car. You know, sometimes you, you, you slide and you slide into the car. So if it's one-sided pocket, it makes it an awful lot easier. Yeah. Um, and, and, the, uh, and again, this is all about public safety. Right? So if you don't get the, the, the plow down the street, ambulances and fire trucks are not going to get down the street either. That's correct. It's all, it's, that's what it's all about is our job is to keep the streets open so that fire trucks, police cars, and ambulances can get to people in case they need them. Essential City Department heads gather together with the mayor and his staff during weather emergencies to plan a course of action. For each storm, the circumstances may be different and plans are tailored to that event. Uh, right now, um, all of our equipment, I got one plow we're having a problem with at the auto park. You know, we'll have that ready tomorrow morning. Yep. So, you know, we're good to go. I don't know how Kenny is going. You guys, Kenny? Yeah, they're all plowed up. Yep, all plowed up. Right In terms of uh, the snow ban announcement, the, the parking ban. So, so we've already announced the school system is going to, uh, uh, schools are going to close at 11.30, right, Mike? Yeah. One school closes at 12 because they start later, but right. 11.30 is most of the schools yeah. being okay. done. My name is Mike Shea. I'm the interim superintendent from the Beth Public Schools. And we're talking about cancellation of schools and what the process is. And the first thing of all, because of canceling of schools is a very difficult decision. And I don't think there's a superintendent that likes to make this call. But it goes about by, by notifying a lot of different people. You know, I have a sheet similar to this here, and front and back, that deals with five administrators that end up calling different people. We have to call radio stations, we have TV stations, we have to call transportation, food, uh, we, we have to call maintenance. So it's a, it's a call that has to be made, but it has to be made within time of when the storm is coming. Sometimes a storm is coming in and we need people there early. It's a, it's a cost factor. You're bringing in custodians three hours ahead of time. You're bringing in people in to do plowing. Do I make a decision about calling school at a half day to get them home before the snow starts accumulating? It's a lot of factors come involved in here and basically the decision is upon myself. What, what I do is that I call other superintendents in the area. Uh, the Bob Waldron from Fairhaven is a person I rely on. Linda Enos at Vogue Tech. Because when you make a decision, you want to see what other people are doing. So it's a very complicated process because I've been wrong in the past where you call school and the snow doesn't come. You know, or you call school and say we're going to get in and then it comes faster. So it's a nightmare for our superintendents. Usually that night before we don't sleep. We're up looking at the outside at two o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning. I've been known to drive my car out at five just to see how the roads were. So it's, it's, it's a tough decision. In notifying personnel, uh, most personnel will hear about it on the radio or TV. We tell them, especially a school district of New Bedford, where you have over a thousand teachers, you know, the only way to really contact them is, is through the media, which is what we do. Uh, you know, whether it's cable TV or Channel 5, Channel 4, and all the state Boston stations, private stations, or basically through radio. Uh, there is a trickle effect down through principals, and sometimes they'll do an automatic, automated call through their school. But I would say the majority of, of personnel will find out like every parent does, which is through the media.
Everybody gets frustrated because, you know, we get a lot of calls that there's a big pile of snow in front of our driveway or there's a big pile of snow in front of our house. I mean, you run out of a place to put snow and, and what happens is the plow goes down the street and eventually they have to push the snow that they're pushing off to the side because you can't push anymore. So they got to leave it somewhere. Um, it's, you know, we try to put it on the corners, um, but it gets to a point where it, it gets piled so high. After the storm, we try and go in with backhoes, front end loaders, dump trucks, and we try and remove it so that it's not a, a, a visual impairment to, to drivers, so it's not a, you know, a hazard. Yeah, and, and when we do these routes, um, the routes are done over and over again. The same streets are done over and over again, right? Yeah, that, and, and that, that becomes frustrating to a lot of people too because they'll see the plow go by and they'll come out and shovel their driveway out. And then the plow will come by again and, sho and plow their driveway in and then they shovel it out and the plow comes by again and it kind of repeats. It's, it's very important for, for people to wait until after we're done plowing. The, the, you know, once we get to the, the street to a point where we can't open it any further, and I know it's hard, to, it's hard to know that, but if you wait usually like an hour or two hours after the snow has stopped falling, it's probably a pretty safe time to come out and start shoveling so, up. On certain streets, people will say, look, you know, it doesn't even look like a plow's come down my, my street yet. And this happened in, during the blizzard. But what's, uh, what, what's actually going on? When the guys go out, what they're, what they're, they're uh, instructed to do is to make a pass, one pass down every street. You start with the main streets first. Then you go to secondary streets, then side streets, and then the small, you know, dead ends and, and other streets. But one pass down every street first. Sometimes the, the snow rate is so great, you know, if it's falling a, a couple of inches an hour, by the time you get back to the street where you started, it's all covered over again. So it looks like no one was ever there. But we have, we have supervisors out checking the routes, and their job is to make sure that, that every street is at least plowed once, and then we start the process all over again. Yeah. Now, um, a lot of times uh, you know, people mention that uh, sidewalks aren't plowed. What's, what, are, uh, what are the obligations of uh, sidewalk plowing in the city? We, do, we have, uh, we have um, three machines, they're called holders, and they do do the sidewalks in the business district, um, downtown, the north end. Um, we open up the sidewalks, but that's done after the streets are, are open and, and the streets are passable for emergency vehicles. Um, we do, well, it, it, simultaneously, I'm sorry, we do have holders working simultaneously to clear the sidewalks, but it's the same process. You gotta, you know, you keep going over them and over them and you, yeah. you just gotta keep working at right. it. Right, now, now do, uh, do residents and businesses have their own responsibilities with respect to the sidewalks? I believe the ordinance states that within a reasonable amount of time after the snow has stopped falling, uh, business owners and residents are, are required to go out and clear their sidewalks of snow. Now, we see during the snowstorms a lot of, uh, a lot of plows out there uh, that are owned by private contractors. Um, you know, what are they up to, usually? You, usually, um, you know, there's a lot of, there are a lot of businesses in the city that hire private contractors to clean their, you know, large parking lots. Um, um, you know, and, and on occasion we'll find a contractor that's pushing snow out into the city street. And we, you know, we try and remind them that that's against city ordinance. That Snow that, that's within a private area has to stay within the private area. It's not allowed to be pushed out into the street, but we don't use any private, all the snow plowing on city streets is done by city employees. Uh, except in some occasions when you have to bring in contractors to augment our efforts, right? Under extraordinary circumstances, such as the blizzard that uh, two weeks ago, um, we brought in uh, heavy equipment front end loaders because it was just, it was a heavy wet snow and it was just too big for our, uh, our trucks to push. So at that, at that case, at our request um, and working in concert with our guys, uh, heavy equipment comes in to help us clear the streets. When it, when it comes to plowing in uh, along the waterfront, who's uh, like around the state pier and such, whose responsibility is that? Well, we have, uh, we have a, a route designated, that Route 7. We have plows from McCushionet Avenue easterly to, to, to the river, but the, um, the Harbor Development Commission um, in recent years has, has uh, purchased three pickup trucks, and we, uh, we also give them a, a front end loader, a backhoe actually with a snow pusher on it. So they, they have uh, three or four plows out working the waterfront. They do the piers first. Um, they, work the, they work MacArthur Drive. Yeah. Um, and then they get down into the fish houses, and so they've been a tremendous help to us. And what about the airport? Who's responsible for that? The airport is um, is the airport gang. They have a they have a great crew up there, and they have a, they have some nice pieces of heavy equipment um, 
And as a matter of fact, I was up there the other day when we were going through the last storm, um, and they were they were out there working on the runway. That's and, and Tom Vick will attest to this. That's that's a different animal because they don't have the benefit of being able to use salt or any kind of chemical additive to the runway. So they're working at you know it's it's raw snow that they're working on. So that's a that's a tough task, but yeah. they have their own crews. Yeah. In all your years in working at DPF, what, what's the craziest thing you've seen out there on, on a big snow event, during a big snow event? Well, um, this is before I was here. I remember the blizzard of 78. There, there were road graders out there pushing snow. I mean, it got to that point, you know. Um, we've, uh, we brought in heavy equipment. We've done it a few times, but when you see those big front end loaders coming with those trash buckets on the front of them, it's a, it's a pretty awesome thing. Yeah. Um, you know, you see the you see the odd things every now and then. Uh, thunder snow, that's a pretty wild event. Um, during the blizzard of oh, uh, oh 05, I think it was, we had to call all the trucks off the road. Uh, we had them stop where they were because it was um, it was whiteout conditions. The guys couldn't see, so that was that was kind of an awesome thing too. And what do they do? They just stop right where they are? Yeah, because the, you, you, you're afraid to have them move any further because you don't know what, you know, they, you, you literally lose where you are, you know, and, and, and all concept of, of where the road ends and all that stuff, so it's, it becomes very dangerous. Tell us a little bit about the shifts that, uh, that your crews are on, how long they're on, and, and so forth. Our guys, we don't we don't have the luxury of, of, of uh, multiple shifts. It's, it's uh, you know, it's an all-in thing. Um, so, we anticipated the last blizzard, um, we anticipated the, the fact that we were going to be here for a number of hours. So we had, uh, we got some cots and uh, we put them, we set them up in, the, in an area uh, for the guys and when the guys get fatigued, and I mean these guys, these guys are out here driving these trucks and they're, they're, they're driving them 18, 20, 26 hours at a time. But it gets to a point where you just get, you know, you, you get so tired that it becomes, you know, hazard to you and, and to, so we, we, uh, we offer them, and the Salvation Army was, has been great. Um, they bring up, you know, cold, they bring up sandwiches for the guys, they bring up hot meals for the guys. So everybody just kind of, you come to the a place that's called the bomb shed, um, but the guys can crash for a couple of hours, have something to eat, you know, and that couple of hours gets you another four or five hours in a plow, so. Yeah. Is, there, is there one thing or, or a couple things maybe that uh, you think people ought to know about uh, the city's plowing plans and efforts that uh, might be a surprise. The thing that a lot of people are kind of surprised about is it's it's not a hodgepodge. You don't just give the guys keys to a truck and say, "Okay, go plow." It's 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 a very there's a very comprehensive plan in place. Um, we do we do pre-planning. Uh, we start working on the snow manual in September, October. Um, the guys, you know, we the guys that that are in the routes, we send them out you know, a day or two days ahead of the storm to, to drive their routes so they know what the nuances are in their routes. Um, it's, it's, it's a very, uh, it's, it's a very well planned and, and most of the time, you know, well, uh, well done thing. It's, it, sometimes it's, uh, you know, if the snow gets to be, if it's a blizzard or if it's extraordinary conditions, then, you know, um, it, it, it gets to be difficult. But for the most part, you know, the guys out there do a wonderful job um, plowing and if you've if you've never plowed, it's it's hard to imagine. Um, you know, when, when you hit a manhole cover and, and you think a bomb went off, and the plow goes up in the air in front of you, and, and it's yeah. you know it's you know it's uh, it's an extraordinary event. But for the most part, the guys do a great great job yeah, out there. They, uh, they did a fantastic job during uh, the blizzard, and um, the streets were were cleared very quickly uh, under very difficult circumstances, and so. And I just want to say, uh, you know, I told your guys and I told uh, you know, the guys over at DPI that uh, uh, you all did a great job uh, under very difficult circumstances. You know, there's some people who you, you can't please, and but we try to please everybody. And but we're really the big, the most important thing is sticking to the plan, executing it, clearing that snow off, and uh, you guys really succeeded. So, you know, I just want you to know that we really appreciate, I really appreciate uh, all you guys are doing. Thank you very much. We appreciate hearing that. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay.